Rumac debuts Verne, a new autonomous taxi prototype coming to Europe in 2026. This is one of the most exciting news I've had to report on in the last few years. This is quite exciting. It's got me really, really excited because it's what we've been waiting for, ladies and gents. But one of the reasons I'm also excited is because it's coming from Rumac. And Rumac literally just unveiled the Bugatti Turbion. Well, Bugatti unveiled the Bugatti Turbion. But Bugatti is now owned by Rumac. And Rumac is partly owned by Porsche. And Porsche partly owns Bugatti. So Porsche still has a big stake in Bugatti and Rumac. But it's a partnership that's working very well for all that are involved. So... I like what I'm seeing and with the Bugatti Tourbillon, it's really an evolution in automobile. It's really something to be amazed by. And a lot of automakers are now joining hybrid and combustion en engine together. Porsche recently did it with their latest uh, Porsche 911. They're putting a hybrid motor in that as well and it's giving it a lot more kick, a lot more power. And with the Bugatti Tourbillon, it's something very similar. 1,775 brake horsepower hybrid power masterpiece. Mamma mia, this car is beyond beautiful. Perhaps the most beautiful vehicle I've ever seen in my life. And this is coming from a Lamborghini fan. And I never thought I would love anything more than a Lamborghini. But I must admit, this car is perhaps the most beautiful car I've ever seen in my life not this one the bugatti turbion but this one is also pretty it's quite pretty as well i must admit it is quite pretty look i never thought the sliding doors could work and just just look cool you know because it'd probably look like a damn minivan wouldn't it but it actually looks pretty damn cool the sliding doors works and this is for convenience to avoid you know affecting traffic all you can see on this car is cameras it's a completely autonomous electric vehicle beaten tesla to the punch you got to remember now it's tesla who wants to build a cyber taxi they're the one who wants to build an autonomous taxi with their tesla autonomous software and needless to say they do possess the best self-driving software in the world outside of china i would say because china has numerous self-driving software that are actually very very advanced as well i don't know if you've seen it in person but it's very very impressive it makes tesla look like they're doing all right but in, in the rest of the world, Tesla is doing incredible, you know. And here comes Remac, the electric automotive brand, unveil a new autonomous prototype robotaxi known as Verne. The vehicle achieves its autonomy by using various cameras with technology from Mobile Eye. This company develops self-driving software technology and partners with multiple EV companies such as Polestar. This is true. I remember when Polestar and Mobile Eye entered into a partnership. Which begs the question that Mobile Eye is probably going to be partnering with other companies that are closely related to Polestar, such as Volvo, Geely brands such as Lotus, such as ZK. Now the company will begin production in 2026. It's quite exciting. You know, we're it's literally around the corner. Verne is negotiating with more than 30 cities worldwide, and the first robo taxi is set to launch in service in Zagreb, Croatia, 11 cities within the UK and Europe and the middle east i must say wow I, I really am quite excited i don't know if everyone else is is quite excited as i am but this for some reason it's like you know it's a child of dream coming coming true you know what i mean it's it's really something special but you know everything that you're seeing being announced in the last few years is something that google has done they just gave up on their project who remembered the google car you don't, I remember the Google car. Was it 2012, 2013? I remember the Google car like it was yesterday, but they gave up on the project. My goodness. Google is often like 10 years or 15 years early, just like the Google glasses, um, Google AI. They gave up on that and now there's ChatGPT. They gave up on the Google glasses. Now there is the Apple um, Vision Pro. There is, you know, MetaQuest. So if you don't know what the Google car is, this is the Google car. Literally, two-door, autonomous driving car. It's, it's kind of crazy, isn't it, that it's exactly what's happening right now. Remac is doing it. Tesla is doing it. Quite a few companies, not just Remac and Tesla, but quite a few companies were investing, you know, autonomous cars. And Google was one of the companies that were like, yeah, we should do this. And they wanted to do this a long time ago.
let's let's remind ourselves just how long ago they wanted to do it. Look, the Verge site looked completely different back then. It was May, early early 2014. May in 2014. That's when they wanted to 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 build this thing. And it was a prototype that was working, you know, to to a certain degree. I remember this video and everything, and just watching this video and be like, wow, wow, 10 years from now, Google would be like self-driving cars everywhere. Literally, 10 years from now. It's 2020 this year. And it's June. It's literally 10 years. And where is this technology, Google? You gave up on it. Why did you give up on it? I have no idea. You know, at this time, 2014, Tesla was starting to really get some attention because the stock was struggling a lot and people were like, Tesla's going to fail. Tesla's going to fail. Every day there was a new article on how Tesla's going to fail. And Google had a had an opportunity to compete against that. Apple had an opportunity. They all did, but I don't really blame them. It's very simple why. Because if you're if it's not the main thing your company does, it's hard to focus on something else when you're a when your company does something different. Let's be honest, Google is not a car company. So for them to focus on a car, it would just take take probably take their their, their attention away from what their real dream is, which is to dominate the internet space. Similar thing with Apple. You can't expect Apple to just like invest in electric vehicles when Apple is a phone company or they're, they're a computer company, you know. It's like they can invest in electric vehicles or just vehicles, but it takes away from what they really represent. Apple is a phone company. They're a computer company. You know, Google is an internet company. Amazon is a e-commerce company. You know, all these companies have their main thing that they focus on. So not every company can just jump into the EV space and succeed. Unless you're Xiaomi. If you're Xiaomi, yeah, you could do that. You could do that really easy. I think this car had over like 70, 80 pre-orders in the first 24 hours. My goodness. My goodness. And let me say one thing. The interior. Yeah, they're winning. They're winning on the interior game. So there will be a prototype. There is a there's an SUV from Xiaomi that's coming. I, I made an article on this. And yeah, it's going to it's going to be something else. So companies can, they can invest in EV and they can be make it successful. But not every company has the ambition, especially when you're as big as Google or Apple. Your focus is so much on your business. You have to think about increasing productivity and revenue by 10% every year or else investors are going to lose faith. So investing in electric vehicles is just like, I have more important things to think about. So I understand that with Apple, but I don't understand it with Google. Google likes to start new projects and then just don't complete it. Then what's the point in starting new projects? I understand why Apple gave up on their electric car. Apple doesn't really like make a lot of their secret projects public they don't really do a lot of experimental crazy stuff you know they tend to stick within their niche now google likes to do a lot of experimental crazy stuff and just give up on it and that's my problem with it they've given up on too much they've lost the lead in too much and you know all all they need to do is just you know they don't need to own the company fully you can be a part investor but problem with being a part investor is that the company will often come to you asking for more money because you're daddy. You are the parent, you know. So that can also be a, a bit of a headache. But Google has the money to invest in these companies. So just just do it and stop giving up, please, because it's starting to become annoying for the Google fans. So how about the design of autonomous future? Wow, Vern, you've really... You've really, you've really done something special with this design, I must say. You know, when you think about what an autonomous vehicle would look like or what you, what you want an autonomous vehicle to feel like in a few years, less than five years, this, this is it, man. This is it. This is it. A kid's dream. My goodness, this is it. So I don't know if I trust this thing fully, but I, I would take a five-minute drive. Um, you know, I, I, I can't resist, but I did, I definitely don't trust this thing fully. Come on now. You can't, I don't trust any autonomous vehicles fully, any robotics vehicle fully. There has to be like a fail safe, like some, some sort of button I can just push to stop the vehicle whenever I need to in an emergency. And thankfully Vern does have that. It does have a switch that will stop the vehicle and start the vehicle if you need to. Now, Vern Robo Taxi design is unconventional as the vehicle only seats two. For many, this is for many, this was a surprise, but the company's explanation on why is simple. Nine out of 10 taxi trips are only for two occupants. And if there are more, 
people usually order more than one taxi. Statistically, this is true. So simple enough to understand, but the design still takes on a new perspective. Tesla Robotaxi, which is still yet to be released at the time of writing, promises a similar style of vehicle with more cyber truck design influence, meaning it's going to have a bit more sharp edges. But they're both promised to be very similar shape, two seated vehicle, which is is quite interesting. It's like it's like Remac and Vern was like, let's go straight for Tesla. Let's 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 hit them where it hurts and let's announce the speaker before they do. And you know what? I love it. I already love this competitive nature. So Vern's design is based upon what users will prioritize, which is why the company design starts from within with a cabin like experience, somewhere one could relax for their journey without a lack of space, somewhere one could relax, somewhere one could relax for their journey without a lack of space is a major concern. Vern also brings along entertainment to the cabin, which is why the vehicle features an impressive 43 inch display and 17 speakers. The infotainment system is there for numerous reasons, including maps, music, watching a movie or playing a video game. Vern is fully autonomous, which means the company would focus on user experience rather than the vehicle being designed from a driver perspective. They removed the side view mirrors and windshield wipers. They believe this will add a certain level of lucidity to the user experience. So what do I mean when I said lucidity? Well, you see, they want it to be an experience where it's like a dream, where it's just like wonderland, where it's just like peaceful, tranquility vibes, where if rain has fallen on the, on, on the screen, you don't have to worry about using a wiper. This car doesn't have wipers, apparently, because it's, it's driverless, so it doesn't need it. All it needs to do is, is for the cameras to be visible and the radars to be working. That's, that's quite wild, isn't it? What we at Monument like most about Remax Robo Taxi Vern is that it will be real and not just another dream. Yeah, that's nice. You know, the, the Google car was another dream. This, this by Remax will be real. The Vern will be real. Vern has a specifically built platform suited for the needs of autonomy above all. The car will utilize a group of cameras and LiDAR sensors to drive without human assistance. I need to change that. It's a good thing I reread it. Designed to work on multiple road services and multiple weather conditions and to adapt to local driving styles. I heard a little something about this car being able to break the speed limit if it has to. If, if others in your surroundings are all breaking the speed limit, then this car might do that as well. That's what I heard. I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true, but uh, that's wild. My goodness. You can hear the excitement inside of my heart. I swear to God, like, you know, as a, as a kid, you would dream of this. But we're so fortunate that we live to see it, aren't we? Aren't we so fortunate? Do not forget GTA 6 is coming next year. I know I can't be the only one excited about that. Leave a comment if you're also excited about that. We're going to play that. I'm, I'm going to play that and live stream that on this channel you know if you want to unsubscribe that's that's your fault we're gonna play gta 6 and we're gonna watch the rockstar stock go skyrocket up it's not rockstar stock it's it's take two but it's uh, take two owns rockstar we're gonna watch that stock skyrocket into the into the stratosphere the bespoke driving experience is at the forefront of thought for Vern. the doors will slide open and close which i've long thought was a needed feature in modern vehicle and the company managed to create such and experience in a beautiful way without diminishing the overall design. This is what I mean. The doors, the sliding doors actually look good. I didn't think they could look good on any car, but they do look good. The roof design also features a rounded transparent glass ceiling, which they call a halo ring. The car also has a driving mode that features up to five different comfort levels for the occupants. The touchscreen allows users to adjust the vehicle setting. The car also houses a physical switch to start and stop the car, known as median. The company says it's designed to give the user a certain level of control if it's needed. One can imagine, perhaps in emergencies, you know, a little switch that would be able to stop the car if needed. Listen, another exciting thing about this company is the, the hubs. The hubs. These are the hubs. It gets a little bit more exciting here as the company's ambition is not only interested in creating an autonomous driving vehicle, but also ecosystem to fulfill its users' various needs as ride-hailing app, which 
seems obvious to the to the today's world, but it's surprising that the app will allow users to personalize the cabin experience before the vehicle arrives for pickup, such as lighting, temperature, and even scent. Who wouldn't want a refreshing experience? Even more exciting is Vern infrastructure, which will include a hub called a mothership. This is where the vehicle can be cleaned, inspected, maintained, and perhaps most important, recharged. I'm quite excited about this, the, the hub. I don't think you fully understand just how excited I am about the hub. Um, I'm very excited about the hub. Uh, this is going to become a little meme, if you will. But the hub is a cool idea because I always see the hub like a, like a micro factory, similar to the micro factories that Arrival wanted to create. You know, it's it's this it's this place in in the city. It could be anywhere that the vehicles would be. It's like a vehicle station. It's like a little bus station for the vehicles. You know, who knows? They could be like they said. They could be maintained. They could be repaired there. Who knows? They, you know what's possible with with with, with those micro hubs you know I'm, I'm gonna call them micro hubs seriously so Vern's production facility is currently being built in croatia with the aim to launch its first taxi in the capital in zagreb in 2026 following this the company will launch the vehicle worldwide starting with europe and expanding to the middle east shortly afterwards so we've got some just a little bit of my thoughts from my newsletter chapter a bold move by Remac and a new company, Vern. I believe this has multiple benefits strategically for business development to take one's technology and advance it in such a way that it could be beneficial to the companies involved in creating modern technology such as autonomous driving and highly advanced technology in the EV space. Developed by Remac and its partners, I believe this is strategical benefit to Remac as it's helping the company to advance itself into the world of technology beyond electric vault beyond electric motor developments, offering a vehicle that can be more commonly placed amongst everyday individuals in numerous cities that we're all living in worldwide. So it's a very smart move by Rimac. You can tell that the company likes to make smart decisions, beginning with the decision to accept investments from Porsche in the early days of the startup and later joining Rimac and Bugatti together to create one brand with shared technology and interests. Together they created the most beautiful car one has ever seen, the Bugatti Turbion. I believe this shows that there are many good things to come from Rimac. And I think Vern could be a huge success for all that are involved. And I'm going to enjoy my, my movie seat. So thank you for watching. Subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. And let me know what you think in the comments below. I will see you in our next video. Peace.